Hives there on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais. Steve Merchant. He's with you. Oh yeah. Yeah. Sentences and all that. Just using the well, you pointed, English language. But language. you put me off, you pointed to yourself and I just said Steve Merchant. But you know what we normally do that every week. You introduce me. Yeah. You say with me and I go Steve Merchant. No, yeah. So like, it's a catchphrase that everyone's waiting to hear it. <laughs> no, but usually I go Ricky Gervais and, and you go with Steve Merchant, but this time you pointed to you so I said it. But I didn't say it. I, it caught me off guard so I didn't <laughs> use the sentence. Oh, I don't like the way you sit, right? I've read medically that if you're slouching like that, can you try and describe how you're sat? It's but you've got the kind of mic. Have you ever seen that picture of when John Lennon was off his head on smack recording Let It Be and he was lying on the floor at Abbey Road? <laughs> That's basically got, what Ricky looks like now. Pain, so scared. It's not good for you that. Look at the. You're, you're not, you're, you can't breathe properly in the diaphragm, no. so you're going to get speak badly. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, hey, listen, I was trying oh. to speak medical stuff there. I was yeah, trying to run yeah. into trouble. Yeah, anyway, yeah. Rick, 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 what? what are the words to wham rap? <laughs> no, what are the words to hey, I don't remember wham rap. What the hell's got into you? Hey, sucker. Now there's nothing you can do. Brilliant. I look forward to um, a forthcoming revival of your music career. Yeah. Rick, I had some devastating news last night. Go on. You know when I left you, I was off to buy a PlayStation 2. Yeah. I just, I was totally in the mood for it. Or a, a PS2, as he said. Yeah, yeah. Which, uh, which confused him, granddad. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, so, uh, you know, I, I think I went yeah. in, like, uh, some electrical stop on, uh, Oxford Street. Yeah. And, uh... The thing I'll just say, the thing about Steve is, is, I wouldn't say he's mean, he hates that. Um, he's careful, right? And he will, he will spend days to get a pound off. Rick. Go Two on. and a half hours I walked around last no. night. I swear to God, walking to different shops, right? I went from Oxford Street to Piccadilly Circus back again, along the length of Oxford Street back again, all over the place, right? I realised I basically couldn't get a better deal than about 240 quid, right? right. For a, a console and a game. Right. So I ended up in Virgin Mega Store, I bought a, uh, Auto Grand Theft 3 or whatever, yeah. and a PlayStation and a memory card or whatever. So I shoot off and I'm walking off and I'm going to the tube and I walk all the way to HMV um, <clears throat> on uh, opposite Bond Street sure. and I just popped in there because I'd forgotten to get something and I went downstairs and I was walking past the uh, Playstations and it went, if you buy a Playstation 2, you can get Grand Theft Auto 3 with £20 off. Oh. I was absolutely devastated. What did you do? I just, I, 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 I crumbled. I didn't know what to do. I was thinking of taking it back to Virgin Megastore going, it's faulty. Uh, but like oh it before, no. you haven't even got it home yet. Oh, I can tell. No, I didn't mean to buy this though. What did you <laughs> buy? Keyboard. <laughs> exactly. Buy a... So the problem is, when I get it back and I wire it up and that, all I can see is the cars are racing around the track. All I'm thinking is, it's like one of those cartoons when a really hungry bloke could just <laughs> see his mate as like a big chicken. <laughs> and all I could see on the TV was just a big £20, 20 pound. Pound note just floating. <laughs> it was an absolute oh night. I'm just devastated by it. 20 quid, I could have bought like another cheap game for that. We went to the, did I tell you this? Rick, we went, we're... would you give me 20 pounds and then I'll shut up about it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we went to the casino once, a group of us. And I lost about 100 quid, and, uh, it was, it was a, you know, great, it was, it was someone's birthday, uh, I think it was Jane's birthday, and Steve, after three hours of gambling, had lost the 20 pounds he got out to play with, right? And I was going, you're really gutted, aren't you? He just went, Do you, have you any idea how much cheese I could get for 20 pounds? Yeah. Cold was, meats. Yeah. <laughs> for 20 pounds, and there it is again last night. <laughs> 20 pounds, I'm robbed of 20 pounds. Literally, they've taken it from my hand. Yeah. The HMV people. I they've can't believe it. They've taken that and they've. I'm going to try and away. think of some things to cheer you up. Should we play some songs? <laughs> Avalanche is there. Frontier Psychiatrist. I never enjoy any record where I think I or a four year old could have made it. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's yeah. just like it's cheating. It's musical um, cheating. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of that one. I won't play that again then. Alright? <laughs> okay. That's done. Yeah. All right. Nice. Shake on it. Yeah. Lovely. XFM 104.9. Kiss on it. Kiss on it. Touch Carl. on it. Carl oh, came in this morning and he no. said he was soaking wet because obviously it's miserable out. And actually, if you're thinking of leaving the house today and thus missing the show, do not leave because it's miserable out. It's, it's like a weather happen. report as well. We play music. We've got chat. We have little jokes, don't we? But Carl um, came in. And it's, it's raining. raining. He said he was soaking wet. Yeah. I said to him, I said, Rick would want you to do it. I want yeah. you to do it. Yeah. Just take your clothes off. Pop yeah. them over there. But do you know what? And he wouldn't. And he said I was going to do it, but I knew you'd say that. But. When you left us in the kitchen when he was making coffee, he went, yeah, Steve said, if you're wet, take your trousers off. And I thought, hold on, Ricky's not here, what's he up to? Little <laughs> 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 yeah. thoughts. No, yeah. I was talking on behalf of Rick. I phoned him up, I said, he he's wet, what should I suggest? Well, I said, well, I, and I, I was in his ear, I was, he had an earpiece and I was going, tell him it's bad for him. Yeah. And I could hear him go, it's bad for you. And you go, well, no, I'm right. go, no, tell him it's, it could. Rheumatism. Yeah. It could lead to rheumatism, drop, take him off. <laughs> 
<laughs> Carl, <laughs> Carl, speak. No one's heard your voice today. Come on, Carl. Come he on, doesn't want to. No, I know he doesn't. We're not. We won't talk to you much. But right, go on. It's just nice to say hello to you. Yeah. Right. People, well, I think people quite like they tune to in know you're here. You. Yeah. We've had some fan mail. For I you. like his little face. His no. little Moby. I drew a picture of him in the week, just doodling, and he got really insulted. Did he? Why did you get insulted? Because it wasn't very good. I looked like Ian Canfield, like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's an insult. Yeah. The ladies love Canfield. Yeah. I mean, they're weird, kind of heavy metal ladies. Yeah. But yeah. The, the ones that drink blood. Yeah. Yeah, they love Canfield. I thought of you look like today, but I think you might find it insulting as well. It's just meant to be affectionate. You look, for people who don't know what you look like, you look like Beaker at the Muppets. <laughs> I, I can't see how that would be an insult. <laughs> ah! Oh, God! We don't need to put it like that. It is, but it's sort of like, I like Beaker. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but you like him because he's a fool. <laughs> he just goes, what did he say? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, you look a bit like that doctor that used to accompany him everywhere. That professor. Oh yeah, the little fat, like, little bloke. Blonde, yeah. yeah, that's not. Nice. Carl, it's... what was it that you told me as well when you came in? Just, just Carl's thought for the day. Okay. Carl, what did you tell me when you came in? Because it was miserable out, and you, and you so made it. Suggestion. It is a grim day in London. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I like it already. I was, I was thinking. Um, oh. Could you imagine dying today? <laughs> Go on, can you explain more though. Just because when you're dying, yeah. you're always like in your bedroom, in your bed, and your always and your family's next door. Always, yeah. And um, I just thought, can you imagine lying there, looking out your window, because they do that as well. They sort of have the curtains open to get a bit of light on your face. And I just thought, what a day! If this was like your last day, could you imagine? But they go on. You made XFM, another. No, no, no. Right. You made another more, more, even more profound, profound point. You said if instead of dying on a rainy day, you'd prefer to. No, if you died on a on a bit of a, a nicer sunny day, then it's not so bad. What <laughs> so, no, it's your last day looking out on the world. Yeah. And it, look at it. Don't you agree? Yeah. I, oh, I thought that was a beautiful point. It was poetic almost. It was, wasn't it? Because oh. no, no, the point was that, that what what upset me was that you said you'd been thinking about that today on the way in, and it upset you. But uh, my point was that there's, if you think about the people that are dying any day, it'll upset you. Yeah. Do you see? Yeah, but you don't think about it when it, when it's sunny because you think, well, they'll be all right today. They won't be that annoyed. But You're absolutely annoyed. Annoyed. But <laughs> that, think of that. Oh, I'm ripped. No. Oh, oh I'm dying, dying today. Oh, it, was no. just, it was just when I got up and opened the curtains and I thought, look at it. I'm yeah. glad I'm not dying today. Mm. Yeah. Carl, play a song. You're yeah, interesting. Historical Society, watching Xanadu on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais. With me, Steve Merchant. See, it doesn't work if you say with me, Steve no, Merchant. it doesn't work. I've got to say either, I've either got to say with me, Steve, or you just go with Steve Merchant. Sure, sure, sure. See what I mean? Okay. It's not as easy, as no, it? No, it's not. No. It's not as easy as it seems. You know this, right? I mean... <laughs> what? <laughs> the radio show. Oh, yeah. We yeah. do, right? Well, we just come in and we don't plan them, we just sort of like chat. Yeah. And it, it, they still pay us, it seems yeah. good, well. Should we just do this all day? Or all day on XFM, or 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 just get a like, get a license where it is just it's Ricky and Steve FM, right. and we just chat and we go, what are you doing there, Steve? Just having breakfast. You go, all oh, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, oh, what are you doing there, Steve? I'll just clean the windows and that, and we have a little chat. and We go, I'm oh, just reading the paper, and it, we just talk and we play records for 24 hours a day. Yeah, I mean, have you spotted any flaws in that plan? Or it would be boring after about an hour and a half. Yeah, is that it? Yeah. Oh, okay. Mm. I mean, this is boring now. No, and it's we've only really, done 20 minutes. No, it's just th we were talking about Carl having a thought, remember? Yes, yes. And then I had that thought when I went I went out to get some orange juice, and I had that thought. So maybe this show can be about let's let's have thoughts. Okay. So we have thoughts. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Or they could, if we haven't got any, they could phone in with some. Okay. Or email a thought. Maybe if you've got a thought, email <laughs> yeah. that in. Just we can talk about Dr. Vase at xfm.co.uk. It could be a thought about anything. Hey, can we go on? Th can we not make those thoughts racist or homophobic though, please? Yeah. Or. Um, not downers. No, nothing that's going to bring us down, you know? Yeah. Upbeat stuff. Yeah. Go on, Carl. You do, gonna... do you know when you said 24 hours then? Yeah. Do you know how much it takes <laughs> to run one of the escalators on the underground for 20 hours a day? How much it costs a year to do that? To run it how long? 20 hours a day? Yeah, it, that's what it runs. The, the Is this another of your, your facts? Mm -hmm. These are always These are always substantiated by an independent source, aren't they? They're not just something you overheard on a bus. Am I? Just, just to check. This I is fact. 
Did you read it on a wall in some, a sandwich some, shop? Sometimes I wish this was on telly because when Steve said this, you have these substantiated by an independent arbitrator. Like, Carl just looked at him, yeah. like he'd just spoken French. <laughs> he just looked like that. It just did. Okay, so anyway, th this this information you've got from a reliable source, you read it on the back of a fag packet or something. No, I think it was in the Metro magazine in the week. Lovely. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So here's the, what's the, and let's just hear it again. How much does it cost? Yeah, <laughs> there's loads of escalators in the, in, on the underground. Yes. And they run for 20 hours a day. Yes. Don't tell us how- Tell you what, record. Carl, that's such a fascinating fact. Don't yeah. tell us. Let's play a record, Rick. Okay. And then people can stay tuned if they want to hear this how much is it like, costs. This is like some sort of mental home radio. <laughs> yeah. Isn't it? I mean, we, we are- I mean, we, we're not mentally ill. We haven't- you know, we haven't have had any uh, head trauma. Um, we're educated people. Yeah. But we come out with- just rubbish. Gobbledygook. Just nonsense. It's like, I can't grasp it. I don't know why he started saying- I've no, I've no idea what that thought you just was- said, You just said 24 hours about doing radio for 24 hours, so I remember- I thought, oh, 20, 20 hours. <laughs> God. So, so we're now we're now examining the thought processes <laughs> that we all have oh before no. we get to. Let's just hear a song. Okay, right. It's half past one, and that film sounds good. Ooh, that film sounds feature, good. Feature, feature. This is where I choose a song from a film that. Oh, that film sounds good. See, uh, this is um, a, a, a film that me and Steve both love, and he actually he saw it first and got me onto it, and so I love it, and I did. It was Rushmore. It was a great film. And from it features one of my favourite artists of all time, um, The Wind by Cat Stevens. And this is off the first album I ever bought from Teaser in the Firecut. This is The Wind from Rushmore. That film sounds good. <laughs> feature, feature, feature. Cat Stevens, The Wind. Elegant. A beautiful song. The album is is a, a superb album. It's it, it's seminal. It's just has some great songs on there. I feel like playing another one, maybe a song for the lovers. Maybe do it okay. later. Yeah. Maybe we could do on. that. Yeah, it's beautiful. I have to say I've uh, seen the uh, the follow up to Rushmore. If oh, you yeah. enjoy Rushmore, it's this new film, The Royal Tenenbaums, with amazing cast: Ben Stiller's in it, uh, Gwyneth Paltrow, and Gene Hackman in his Golden Globe winning uh, performance. Oh, yeah. Same sort of thing as Rushmore, same kind of style, but a uh, lovely sort of uh, kind of family comedy. Absolute dynamite, and again a brilliant soundtrack. Nico is on there, Nick yeah. Drake, all kinds of treats. Forthcoming in the cinemas, Rick. You say the follow-up is it the? Same it's not director? a sequel. It's the same director, same writer, right. some of the same cast. Bill Murray makes another appearance. Isn't same this, style. Um, haven't the Swingers lot done another one? They have. Their new films Made with the right. same John Favreau and uh, Vince Vaughn. Again, dynamite. Really good fun. Not as kind of perceptive as Swingers, but certainly as much fun. Have you seen Swingers, Carl? I think so. Is it the one where um, they've got a line in it? They've got a catchphrase in it, haven't they? You're the money. You're money. No, you're that's so money. That's it. Yeah, 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 I've seen it. Yeah. yeah, I love the fact that I said you're the money. You went no. You went you're so the money. You went yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, yours is from uh, what's his name? Yeah, Jerry Maguire. No, yeah. that's show me the money. Yeah. Yeah. I've seen it. Anyway. See, that was really articulate. We had, uh, uh, we did a feature, it linked into film, uh, Steve Love Films, did a little, um, you know, uh, 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 off the cuff review, then it went into gobbledygook again. Yeah. That, <laughs> I can't even say it. Yeah, you couldn't even say the word gobbledygook. It's, yeah. Anyway, listen, you had an interesting fact you were going to give us, Carl. I don't think we can leave people waiting for this any longer. No. Right. <laughs> um, how much does it cost <laughs> to run one escalator, that's just one, Yeah. on a London underground, it's running 20 hours a day because it shuts for four hours in the night when they're cleaning up and that. Yep. Yeah. How much does it cost to run it for a year? Twelve pounds. <laughs> Sixty thousand pounds. The trouble with these facts is I, I've got nothing to compare it against. Uh, well, well, think about like <laughs> your yearly electric bill <laughs> at home. Well, when you put it like that, when you <laughs> it's a lot, isn't it? When you think they could just use stairs. Carl, play a song. <laughs> Politics on XFM 104.9. <laughs> Please, people, just use the stairs. Chemical Brothers, star guitar. I'm going to be honest, Steve. I like the video more than the song. Agreed. <laughs> Good. Yeah. Um, I, I just wish we could maybe tape the bits we're not on air, just because that's when Carl comes into his own. Yeah. He just said to me, I was, I don't know what I was doing, I was sort of like pottering around, dancing around, doing something annoying probably, and he just looked at me, I looked around, he was looking at me, and I looked back and he went, have you ever used a Y-front properly? Genius. 
It's a great question because the answer is definitely no. Definitely Has no. Has does anyone use their wi front properly? And by that I mean get your winky out of the little sort of um slot provided as yeah. opposed to like put it to one side or pull them down or yeah. whatever. Has anyone used a wi front properly? I don't think I've ever done it. I don't think I've ever done it. I've never seen anyone in a toilet doing it, Rick. You should be looking. <laughs> I wish I hadn't said that. <laughs> I caught, I caught ya. Really? <laughs> yeah. That's <laughs> actually how you prove people are gay. <laughs> yeah. You get them into this conversation. Yeah. Yeah, and it's a trap. Uh, yeah, it's a trap. It was, it was, it was, it was the trap. Yeah. I'm not gay, by the way. Yeah. yeah. You didn't prove <laughs> I was gay, I double bluffed you. Because <laughs> I knew the old gay trick. I thought it was the old gay lord say no thing. That is another method. Oh, yeah, there's, a, a, there's innumerable methods of doing it. That's how Oscar Wilde was caught. Yeah. Yeah. What happened there? Well, the judge went to him, uh, did you see that film last night? Gay lord say no, and he went no, and they went take him away. Yeah. <laughs> take him down to the cells. Yeah, take him to Reading. It is true. Um, that is well. True. It originated in America. Yeah. So many of these things do. It's yeah. a brilliant point, Carl. I'd like to hear from anyone. Anyone listening who's- and I mean, uh, well, they'll just lie, wouldn't they? I yeah. I don't even use, uh, sort of, flies. No. Usually. I sort of, just, sort of, sort of pull my t wi uh, my sort of tracksuit. Yeah. That's why I wear, sort of, like, elasticated waist yeah. pants all the time. Exactly. Just sort Speed. of, like- <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. yeah you got to get in there with the minimum of effort. Yeah. We and out. Sure. Sure. Often, I won't shake. No, well, no. To my detriment, because it <laughs> often leaks out a little bit later, oh. doesn't it? Ever been out on a date with a girl where it's just trickled down your leg <laughs> and you wish it hadn't, and you're thinking, <laughs> what if she gets my trousers off later? She might smell and see it. What? <laughs> oh, what? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I said there. <laughs> right. Uh, Rick, I had for Christmas something which I think might excite you and interest yeah. you, because I know you're obsessed and interested by facts. Yeah. Don't fiddle with the microphone. Well, I was just looking at what it was underneath it. Stop, listen to what I'm saying! I know, no, listen, let me explain. People could hear you moving the microphone. Could they? Yeah, I can hear it in my headphones. You know, it's the little pop shield that goes over the mic. Yeah. I was gonna see where the, what the, what way the mic was facing, so I just had a look. Who cares? No one's interested. Leave it. Carl, I'll tell you if it's a problem. Alright. Why am I talking like that? <laughs> <laughs> um, so this is a book, uh, it's just facts and trivia. It's edited by Sir Isaac Asimov, who oh, I think's yeah. dead. So I don't know when my parents bought this book. I assume it's sort of from a second-hand shop or something. Right. It's quite long, but I got it for Christmas. I keep meaning to bring it in because there are generally the facts are quite sensible in here, and I like to think if Isaac's been involved, they're probably substantiated. It's not like kind of just this nonsense on the web. Or, I think or that this is probably or crucial. up in Greg's the Baker's that Carl <laughs> exactly. gets most of his facts from. <clears throat> the ancient Egyptians trained baboons to wait on tables. <laughs> <laughs> Carl, fascinated. Brilliant. That's fantastic. But what, 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 what my point about that is, why did they stop? Yeah. It's ge that's a genius idea. Did, Would you not want to go to a restaurant where they have baboons serving? No, I'll tell you what happened. So it might have been like the Planet of the Apes and they sort of rebelled. <laughs> one of them could talk, one of them could take his order, and one day went, went um, uh, do you want fries with that? And the bloke got really annoyed and said they're answering back, and then there was a, some sort of rebellion. Right, 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 yeah. right, right. The Planet of the Apes isn't true, is it? It's, it's not, no, it's not, it's, it's not a documentary. Right, okay. I wonder, because what I like the idea of having baboons is the fact that I reckon they're like, I have tr difficulty, and I'm sure you do, Carl, like, working out that sort of 10%, you know, on a bill. Yeah. I reckon baboons would find that particularly hard. I reckon you could get away with under-tipping them all the time. Yeah, yeah exactly. Just not leaving enough and just legging it. <laughs> exactly. They go away and you go, sucker. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. I'd love to see yeah. some baboon restaurants. If there's yeah. any restaurateurs out there, so Terrence Conrad or someone. Could I, could I if you do go, go to a restaurant and you've been waiting on us, please don't order the banana daiquiri, because it comes half-eaten. They can't help their little selves. <laughs> they really can't. They're okay with, like, you know, Beef and steak and chips and all that. But you, you know, there's a little bit. I go. Do you want? Can you imagine that the baboons serving at waiting tables? It's genius. Just stop to think about that. It's absolutely incredible. Yeah. It's absolutely dynamite. Yeah. That's a See, good zoos fact. would be a lot more popular if there was like the canteen. You could go. If and they were uh, serving tickets to two. Uh, yeah, exactly. one child row. Okay, go through there. But okay. I think they should do other things, like in, you know, in the Flintstones, they used to mix cement in that bird's kind of pen. Pelican, yeah, yeah. Just, we should start doing that again. <laughs> because that's, that also happened in ancient times. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, according to the Flintstones. Be yeah, before they had proper cement mixers, that's what <laughs> that they was, did. That was how they it, did it. Definitely, just, yeah. Just, uh, animal facts. I remembered one in the week. Um, Go on. There was, do you know them two gay American men who have, have tigers? Well, they're not necessarily gay, they're not they? no one actually knows if they are gay no, or not. they are. All right. Okay, well, yeah. They, okay. Gilbert and George, is it? No, that's those <laughs> artists. Okay. Yeah. They're called Siegfried and Roy. But, yeah. but anyway. Who, but who may or may not be gay. Yeah. yeah. And if they are, so what? And if they are, so what? But yeah. if they're not, uh, and they no, don't. I just said that so you knew, knew what I was talking about. Cause sure. Okay, the two gay ones, yeah. Go on. Two possibly gay ones. Yeah, let, let's not worry about libel law um, anymore, then. Yeah, if you shave on. a tiger's head. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. 
<laughs> Whoa. Right, okay. you got to treat that sentence with a lot more reverence than you did. <laughs> Think what you're saying. If you shave a tiger's head, not just his head, its whole body. If oh, sorry, sorry, <laughs> sorry. Yeah. So I thought you, I thought you were getting weird. Go on. Then, yeah, if you shave a tiger, yeah, go on. It's still stripy underneath. The yeah. Skin, the skin. Is stripy. it like rock? <laughs> it goes all, it the, like way all the way through. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's amazing. Where did you hear that one? That's. I remembered that. Like, I was. Was that a drunk just shouting it in the street? <laughs> 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 I shaved a tiger and it's still stripy. <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I must yeah. make a note of that thing's calm. <laughs> yeah, that's an interesting fact. Well, you know a polar bear? A polar bear's um, skin is actually um, black, and its fur is transparent, not white, and it gives the illusion. So it uh, gets all the radiation possible from the sun, but it's still camouflaged. I didn't understand that, Rick. Sorry, you lost me. If a, its skin's black, a polar bear's skin, skin's black. And its fur is translucent. And its fur is translucent. So why is it white when we see Well, it's it just because the, the light hits it and the sun reflects on yeah it. and it makes it look white yeah so if you look at each individual hair it's actually translucent so at there, night hair. it would be black <laughs> well everything is is it yeah oh not bright stuff rick <laughs> <laughs> you've embarrassed yourself play a record oh i know all about animals and stuff do you rick <laughs> P-O-D. Bit of pod there. Alive. That's grown on me. Yeah, it's not bad. It, you know, it rocks. I mean, we've got to give it that. <laughs> I will certainly give it that, Rick. Yeah, XFM 104.9. Ricky Gervais. With me, Steve Merchant. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, more from the uh, Facts and Trivia book. Edited, as I say, by Sir Isaac Asimov, so not sure. just overheard on the tube or yeah. uh, by a drunk. <clears throat> well, he might have overheard him on a tube by a drunk. drunk. And just put him in a book. <laughs> yes. uh, listen to the whole fact here before you make any judgments. Okay. Sauerkraut was renamed Liberty Cabbage by Americans during World War One. Sure. In their denunciation of all things German, some Americans actually kicked Datsuns. Are they little dogs? Yes. Yeah. Little German dogs, just give them a kick in. Because they were German. Or they were derived from Germany. I don't know if they got to like a small sort of French village and just said, bring out your Dachshunds. <laughs> Why, what are you going to do to them? Nothing. Give them a little bit of food or something. You're not going to kick them, are you? Got no, I've heard about you Americans. No, no, just bring out a little sausage dog. We, you say it aggressively. <laughs> you said that aggressively. Like, well, no, no, bring out the little sausage dog. Okay. Well, you're not going to hurt it, though. Of course I'm not. not if you it. hurt it now, it's like it's against the Geneva Convention. I'm everything. not going to kick it. Well, you, I didn't even bring up kicking. Uh, I didn't even mention kicking, so why have you, <laughs> why have you done that? That's, I don't know. Just well, I... I, I I haven't got a Datsun. If, oh. Sacre bleu. Yeah. Sorry. That thing down my trousers is just a baguette. <laughs> yeah. Do you remember that, Carl? Do you remember Dynamite that? Dynamite fact. A Baguettes fact. were invented by Napoleon so he could carry him down his leg. <laughs> uh, yeah. Which is fun. There's one more here that I thought might... Uh... I know that there's a lot of those kind of amusing laws and stuff, antiquated laws and that on the yeah. web and things. But again, it's Asimov. I'm thinking it's yeah. true. City Ordinance Number 352 in Pacific Grove, California, makes it a misdemeanour to kill or threaten a butterfly. Threaten? <laughs> yeah, you can't even threaten a butterfly. So if it goes... Don't even look at it aggressively. <laughs> yeah. Butterfly comes down, I go, what are you looking at? I go, nothing. Yeah. And he goes, judge! What? <laughs> yeah. Bloke looking at me with a net. I wasn't doing anything, wasn't doing anything. I'm fishing. But what, see, the thing about that is, a lot of the kind of, you know, sort of the wilder butterflies from the wrong side of the tracks, they're just going to take advantage of it. They're going to cruise around, they're going to be playing loud music, yeah. you know, abusing old people. You're yeah. un they're untouchable. And they're going to go, have you got a problem with that? <laughs> exactly. You're gonna, and no. you're going to go, no, no, it's fine, go about your business. No. Butterflies there, Rick, in California, running amok. Yeah. Should repeat it. Yeah. Um, no, then, there's another one that I think you'll be a fan of. Uh... Oh, it might take me a while to find it. Maybe we should play a track. Oh, wow, that takes us nicely. That's a lovely link. <laughs> that thing about you said about playing a track. Keep going, keep going, keep going. <laughs> um, this is Song for the Lovers, and I've chosen a, a, a great track here um, uh, by Lloyd Cole, oft forgotten, but a great singer-songwriter. And this is one of his uh, best songs, I think. In fact, I think Sandy Shaw covered it in the mid-80s when she had a little bit of that resurgence. Um... It's uh, Are You Ready To Be Heartbroken? And it's a uh, song for the lovers. Lovely tune. Enjoy. Are You Ready To Be Heartbroken? Um, actually, uh, Lloyd Cole, with his commotions, that was, uh, that was done with, and uh, uh, I love it. Beautiful. Cheers. Facts and trivia, the last one, Rick. Go on. 
Uh, this is a sobering lesson for us all. Go on. At the Pan American Exposition in Buffalo in 1901, yeah. President William McKinley received a line of citizens, shaking hands with each. In the line was a man with a handkerchief covering one hand. Mm. Neither of the two Secret Service men guarding the President was curious enough to take a look at what might be under the handkerchief in the hand of the man, Leon Golzgoz, an anarchist. Yeah. What he had was a loaded revolver, and when the President thrust his right hand out for the shake, Zolgozd fired twice. McKinley died a week later. So, what he did there, it was outwit the might of presumably the FBI or the yep. Secret Service by covering the gun with a handkerchief. Clever. That's brilliant. It's absolute genius. J just think how they had to explain that. And they go, uh, wh wh how did they get, how did he get close enough and shoot the president? And they go, uh, we didn't see the gun. Why? Covered it with a hanky, did he? Oh, well, you're not to blame then. <laughs> exactly, we, ca we can't compete with that sort of, you know, uh, didn't you think to look under the hanky? No. No, I just, probably just thought it was a hand. Of course, because right. that's where the hand would be. Did you not think he was probably holding a gun or something? Didn't do that. We didn't train. We didn't do hiding it with a hanky, did we? Oh, if he didn't do it, then it's not your fault. <laughs> Don't worry about it. But he lived, did he, for a week? The president lived with it for that's, a week, yeah. That's because they had to go to him and they are probably shuffling around his bed going, sorry about that. Why don't you look? I had a hanky, did he? <laughs> oh, were they now in jail? Well, they were. Go on. Well, when we went into the jail to give him some bread and water, he had a hanky over his hand. Right, yeah. We, we thought nothing of it. Sure. And it was a gun? Yeah. It was a gun and he got out. See? He sh Do you remember the last... Remember the gun? Yeah. That's terrible, isn't it's it? It's pathetic. No one's used that method since. <laughs> I know. Because it was effective there, but you don't hear about that now. <laughs> No. People using all kinds of elaborate methods to yeah. assassinate people, poisoning their wine. Yeah. <laughs> I think that was Rasputin. <laughs> <laughs> As I recall, they put some poison into his wine. Well, they didn't, they I didn't, didn't study it in history class, that's my memory of but it. But if only they listened to Carl last week, chink the glasses. Always chink the glasses. That shows that they used to te test it, didn't they? Pour a little bit from yours into mine, that means I'm not poisoning you. Yeah. But if you're thinking of uh, murdering someone, you know, just, a, a dignitary. With a, with a gun. Yeah, but let's pop say... Pop a hanky you, over it. Just think about that. Hanky just pop a hanky over oh, it. I don't know, pop it inside an oven glove. <laughs> <laughs> and just yeah. wear that as you go do it with their hands. <laughs> or yeah. sooty. Or, or one of those yeah. big gladiator style pointing <laughs> yeah. foam hands they used to have <laughs> yeah. on gladiators. Yeah. That's genius. Yeah. I'm just using this because I, I love the, the president. No gun in there, there, is there? No. no. It's just a big finger. Check if you want. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, we won't then if you said check. <laughs> right. That's, that's, that's oh, unlucky. Do you know, do you, have I ever told you my method, Carl, my genius method of um, assassinating someone? This is brilliant. This is the ultimate crime. Oh, is this the ice cube one? Have I told it to you before? No, but I know that. <laughs> What's that the ice one? cube one? When you, um... Shoot an ice bullet up. You get someone round. Rick, don't say it, don't reveal it, because it's my story to tell. Oh, Blabbing there's two. Out. I know two of them. Well, listen, let me tell you it and see if this is the one, right? Mm. This is genius. Mm. Right, you rent a room across the street from the person you want to kill, right? Yeah. And then when their window's open one day, right, what you do is, what you've done is you've made an arrow from ice, okay? Mm. And then what you do is you, uh, you, you train, like, to become a, a brilliant marksman with a bow and arrow. It's yeah. an old one. It is brilliant, but it's, this is why it's classic. And then you shoot them with the arrow, then it goes across the street, into their heart, kills them instantly, but what's brilliant is, the arrow, the murder weapon, it then melts, yeah. mm. dries out, there's yeah. no murder weapon. Yeah. And then you can take apart an the bow, Another, and another one, Steve, is to stab them, then, stab them, then take it out and walk away. No, Same, because no murder weapon. No but, there's no, no, but you've got to get into the building, this is the point, you're across the street. Right. The, you know, the only thing that could get what you is if someone saw you shooting an arrow at What about an arrow on a string? Arrow on a string? What are you talking about? No, not an arrow on the string, because that's not going to work. What if the string broke as you were trying to loop? Good point, good point, good no, point. Rick, I, I no, Rick, No, the ice arrow is the only way. The ice arrow is the only perfect method it's, of assassination. An, that was on Columbo. Was it? But th there's another one. Do you know, like I was saying about the, uh... The murder weapon's irrelevant, Steve. What? The fact that it's a murder weapon that is irrelevant. No, because there's uh, fingerprints on it and stuff. You're having a laugh, Rick. I defy you to win. There's to no win fingerprints on a bullet when it goes through your you head never, at 12,000 miles. Yeah, but they can trace it to the right, the same gun, can't they? They can figure that Throw out. Throw the gun away. Okay. No, but they'll find the gun. They always find the gun. Burn I've it. Seen the, no, you can't burn a gun. Rick, my point is. Melt it. No, the point is his fingerprints and stuff. Well, no, wipe it. 
Ricky, never Wear try gloves. and kill someone. Wear gloves. They'll, they'll catch up with you. They'll always catch up Will with they? you. Will they? Oh, I won't then. The ice arrow is the only way. No, the ice arrow is the only way. I bet that was the one case that Columbo didn't solve. That, that was, that's one of them. The other one is, do you know I was saying the other week yeah. about the, uh, the drinks and you chink your glasses and stuff? Yeah. I weigh around that, put the poison in the ice cube, you quickly have a swig before it's melted before it's and they'll go, that's alright, I can drink that, it's not dangerous. Just say, oh, I'm gonna want to show you some pictures or something. Let the ice cube melt, the poison goes in the drink, you say, oh, knock that back. Yeah. You look thirsty. They'll have it. They'll die. Genius. That is good. Carl, you and I, man, we're like criminal masterminds. Yeah. All what right? happens when they find the poison in the body and go, well, he was at Carl's house drinking, it might have been... You'd have, have <laughs> you'd have legged it. Oh, yeah. He'd have been off with his missus and like 30,000 pounds or whatever it was. Yeah. Wouldn't mm. it? Yeah. So that's perfect as well, is that it? It's a perfect crime, So, so, so it's, hold on, are all perfect crimes to do with ice? Pretty much. Hmm. Well, well, well. Roots, manoeuvre, witness. We were talking earlier about um, people who use Americanisms, like yeah. they've used it all their life, and it, it's our pet hate, isn't it, really? Oh. Like, just people who say, I was a uh, DJ, and I going, uh, I look, uh, you know, the risk of sounding a little bit, you know, butt licky. But butt licky. What's that? Never heard that. But don't say but. Yeah. I, well, people. I, I heard someone say he was on my ass. Oh. He was on my ass. Yeah. I've never. What? <laughs> there was. I tell you what. Almost annoys me almost as much as that. There was a guy I used to know who'd pretend, and this guy was like he'd never done anything wrong in his life. He had no street cred whatsoever. And I was driving along with him once, back from somewhere. And a police car just pulled out and was just following us along the road, because police cars sometimes do. Not following us, just happened to be driving in the yeah. same direction. And he went, hey, up the pigs, watch it. <laughs> like, like what, I was supposed to think, what, you've done some crime? Yeah. You're part of Grand Theft Auto 03, and uh, we, I better be careful, because you've got some knocked out, off gear in the back. Yeah. And we'll watch it, it's the bloody pigs. Or a dead, just play it cool, play it a cool. dead, a made man that you just exactly. killed in the boot. Nonsense, and it's, I just was so annoyed with that, that, kind of pretending to have street cred. I know, just that, uh, one, I remember once, right, an American came to our school, we were all about 13 or 14, and he was just, the, he was like, you had to be his friend. And it was like people vying for his attention because he was sort of like this cool American bloke, right? And uh, he was like good, good at sports, straight. He's always, you know, it's just great. And uh, I remember someone saying like tube, a toothpaste, and he and he laughed, said tube, tube. And I go, well, what is it? They said it's tube, it's tube, right? And people go, no, it's tube, right? and they go, it's tube, right? And I went, I say, I say tube. <laughs> he went, and they sort of looked at me, and they just thought, you liar. <laughs> I said, no, I say, oh, let me just think, t t <laughs> no, I say tube. Oh. When you're a kid, like, any American you ever meet is the coolest thing. It yeah. doesn't matter if it's a huge, fat bloke yeah. wearing Bermuda shorts and a camera on his neck, it's cool, because they yeah. speak with an American accent. Well, that is cool. And, that's, and they say... Being a huge, fat bloke in Bermuda shorts is cool. Sure. Yeah. 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 That's you're... what you keep telling yourself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm growing into that look, says Rick. <laughs> <laughs> the Canadian tourist look. Absolutely. <laughs> but no, so anything, you know, sidewalk. Yeah. I mean, if I could say, like when I was sort of f 14, if I could have said sidewalk, fender, you know, yeah. I always wanted to go into a sandwich shop and just order something on rye. I want to be one, I want to be one of those 80 year old, um, sort of Yiddish blokes, those old, you know, sort of like old vaudeville Jewish guys. Um, that, you know, they sit in diners and talk, you know, like, like, like Walter Matow talks. Right, yeah, yeah, like that. yeah, I, yeah. I want to, I want to grow into that, a long coat, and I'll go, ish. Yeah, or you they. Yeah, maybe I'll start. Yeah, well, convert to Judaism initially. Yeah. Be your first port call, and then just tour the vaudevillian, you know, circuit. Yeah. In the cat skills. Or the mind, some kind of schmuck. Yeah. Something like that. What do you, uh, Carl, are you, would you like to be American? No, not at all. Really? Got me nerves. When I was in, um... <laughs> Get on my nerves! When, a American. whole nation there, reduced. <laughs> when I was in Barbados at Christmas. Oh, and then drop right. it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, there's loads of them there, because that, that's... Was that when you were doing a bit of extra sort of waiting? Because <laughs> <laughs> you, 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 you were sort of... Your girlfriend was cleaning rooms, wasn't went she? There, went there for Christmas, and, um... Um, there's loads of them there, because that, that's like really close to America, that's like <laughs> uh, Blackpool is to Manchester type It's thing, exactly right? like that. Yeah. So it's, it's it's exa that's the analogy a lot of Americans use. So but I think they call it the tropical Blackpool. <laughs> <don't they? laughs> but, yeah. but they were going on. That's only all the brochures, I'm sure. Uh, listen, yeah. Right? yeah. And serious now, but yeah, we were going serious. on about the uh, September 11th thing. Yeah. But they call it the, um, of course, uh, this is American. Of course, um, brilliant. The uh, the nine eleven, 
The 9-11. That's what they call it. Really? Oh, that's awful. That is, so it's like people who say 24-7. Yeah. Well, I'm Americans working my say ass that. off 24-7. Well, Americans that say yeah. that. Well, they're allowed, though. Oh, Americans are. It's, yeah. It's, I'm talking about an English person who might say it. Yeah. <laughs> Fool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's terrible. Yeah. Do yeah. that American accent again? Yeah, of course. Uh, the, uh, the 9-11. Where, yeah. where are you from? <laughs> what? What? Uh, can we find from America? Is that? <laughs> yes. that's, that's how they sounded in Barbados. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. Sure. But can Carl, you do any other impression? But Carl doesn't. I, I very much doubt that Carl likes newfangled countries like America. Yeah. He doesn't like London. No, true. So he's, he's not going <laughs> to. Have like... you been to America? Yeah. Did you enjoy it? Went to Florida. No, they got me again. Got any news? Um, yeah. <laughs> went went for some food. Yeah. Um. And it was the last few days, I didn't take much money with me, and we were in Florida, and we were hungry, and we sure. went for some steak, <laughs> and we had our dinner and that, and it's, I think it's their equivalent to the Angus Steakhouse, yeah. right. and um, sat down, had, had the steak, and that's huge, big portions. But anyway, we didn't have much money left, and we had like another two days left, so we didn't leave, we didn't have much money for a tip, do you know how over there they expect it? Yeah, a big tip, yeah. So um, we left what we could, and I don't know what it was, it might have only been the equivalent to 60 pence, Yeah. but... He didn't have to do that much. We didn't have loads of courses because we didn't have much money. So he brought us like the main course and I don't know, a sure, couple, sure, couple sure, of sure, diet sure. cokes. And um, anyway, left them the, the, the 60p yeah. on the way out and he comes running over. Excuse me, sir, you can have this back. Because it wasn't enough. I mean, yeah, it's outrageous. What did you say? I said, all right then. Yeah. We have, well, I needed it. I mean, I, I thought yeah. it was nice to leave them something, but obviously it wasn't enough, so... Got us a couple of more. Is it good coats. fun with you on holiday? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, do you enjoy yourself? Yeah. Do people go with you on holiday? I get bored after about four days. Do you surprise me? <laughs> and then what, what, what do you expect out of a holiday car? What do you what do you what do you go sort for? Of soak up some of the culture. Yeah. <laughs> you liar! <laughs> you liar! What What did you learn about Barbados <laughs> while you were there? A <laughs> lot of crabs on the beach. <laughs> Ah! I just imagine him sitting there with his knotted oh, hanky on his head. I like that. Not bad. Bit of Gary Newman there. That's uh, Richard X and Sugar Babes. Our Freaks Electric. Is that one of those um, things where they've taken one song and they've laid it over the top of the other? Brilliant. It's good, no. No, it's good. Like it's good. good. Yeah, it's good. Classic. Um, uh, yeah, well, we're, we're nearly done, aren't we? We are almost finished. Uh, which is a couple shame. of, um, great tracks. With a few laughs. Maybe, we've had a few laughs, haven't <laughs> yeah, we? Exactly. I've perked up. Yeah, you have, you have. Yeah, You've no, lost it here a bit, though. You feel a bit, it sounds, it sounds like you're a bit down again. Well, it's, uh, that's, that's just two hours work okay. in one long sure. stretch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I reckon we could do a three hour show now. No, 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 no. No? No, 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 no. no. Skin of the teeth, sort of just. Yeah, we've yeah. barely got away with this. Really? This is beginning to fall apart now. It is, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, but yeah, we've had a good fun, time. We've had, we've had a few laughs, as I say. Um, I just think a car on the beach. He said he started winding the crabs up because he got bored. Mm. And he started throwing sand at them. It's like a child's experiment. When you were in California, you weren't aggravi aggravating butterflies, were you? Because <laughs> oh, that's a misdemeanor. Scary though. The weather's really freaky. Where? In uh, California. Is it? Yeah. In the day, it's dead nice. Come six o'clock, goes black, and then right. the rain comes down. It's freaky. Uh, is that every single day, Carl, or was that just the week you were there? Uh, every day. I was there for about a week. It happened every day. Uh, so as far as you're concerned, that happens all, all year <laughs> yeah, round. Yeah, good thing. So what you're saying is if people are booking a holiday, they should be conscious of this, because <laughs> yeah. it will always happen. <laughs> California tourism. Oh, that's a fact. It does. I think it does. But, but, okay. but why did you start throwing sand at crabs, by the way? Just because um, you get bored on the beach. You sat there, you, you look around, yeah. um, and then... I saw these crabs and I was watching the way they move around and yeah, what they funny, do. Yeah, funny, innit? Sort of to Did that annoy you, the way they moved? No, I mean, <laughs> it works for them. <laughs> <laughs> Good of you. But, uh, it was just, uh, what I was weighing up is they're yeah. quite close to the sea, so sure. I was watching the sea come They up. like it close to the sea, don't they? Yeah, yeah, but they don't like it too close. No. So, like, the sea was coming close to them and they'd run towards me. Yeah. So, as the sea came in to, to them, I was chucking sand the other way and it was like, ooh. They didn't know what to do. They didn't know where to go. Really? Oh, yeah. How long did that keep you occupied for? <laughs> the last three days was that. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever seen, uh, I don't know if I've described this before, do you remember a classic Paul Daniels episode where uh, Paul is having tea with some baboons, I think? 
Jim's yeah. full circle. And um, yeah. he's got a little box, and inside the box is a mirror. And he gives it to the chimp, and it looks in the box, and it's confused by its own reflection. It can't figure it out. So it's looking behind the box, trying to figure out, is there another monkey behind it? Yeah. It goes on like that. It's dazed and confused. It was there for, for weeks, just staring into it. I imagine you're a bit like that on the beach <laughs> with, with the yeah, that's great. I think that's my analogy. I, <laughs> yeah. Poor Daniel's chimps. <laughs> yeah. I kept a crab once for a week. When we went to Bognor, um, it was me and my mum and my nan in an Oh, up- party time. <laughs> 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 oh, man alive. You, look. You haven't, the, you, the, haven't the lived, you haven't lived until you've woken up to the sound at three o'clock in the morning of your nan um, having a wee in a tin bucket and echoing round a caravan. Man alive. Yeah. I was about <laughs> nine. You'd brought a chick back. <laughs> <laughs> I was about nine, right? <laughs> and I just kept a crab in a first day of In the bucket? In a... <laughs> 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 I don't know where it came from. Uh, no, I found it on the beach and I brought it back and I kept it in a little bowl in the sink. And then the last day, it started to smell of it. And then the last day, my mum said, go and put it back. And I went and put it back. <laughs> so I had a pet crab for a week. And did it, did it die? What happened to no, it? No, no, it was, it just got bored. Sure. It just, it didn't do a lot. Did it the... start throwing sand at you? <laughs> 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 oh. oh, Listen, God. I think we better play some more shit because we've got yeah. a few so- songs to squeeze in. Uh, I just wanted to play a track. Um, I was watching MTV the other day and sure. I was a bit confused. Yeah, so was I. I like that. Because um, I saw a video for the Electric Soft Parade's Silent to the Dark. Yeah. But it was called Silent to the Dark 2. But it was the same song. It sounds like they've redone it. The video is different to the old video. I was very confused. Hopefully someone will phone in and solve it for me. Anyway, this is the original Silent to the Dark. Still a good track. Let's hear it, Carl. Silent to the Dark, the debut single by the Electric Soft Parade. I like that. Yeah. Very good. Very good choice there. Apparently discovered by XFM, is that right, Carl? Yeah, sent a tape into Claire Sturgis. You see? Big time now. What did she do with it? And sold it? <laughs> yeah. Got a little five pound starter bag of skag. Exactly. Oh, and bless the rest her. is history. Well, w- I've enjoyed myself. I have. But can I just say, we don't just like, you know, muck around and do stupid things and play great music. <laughs> We're also informative. And we I want to leave London with this tip that Carl, for no reason, just told me. Um, do you want to do it, Carl, or shall I tell him what you just said? Rick, we haven't got much time, you better explain yeah, it. Yeah, okay. Uh, if you got, he said, you've been on the Millennium Wheel, I went, no, he went, well, if you do, here's a tip. Go when there's lots of disabled people on there. And I, I was up for it, I went, why? He went, you get more for your money, because I have to keep stopping and letting them off. <laughs> you get an extra six minutes. <laughs> Alright? Good, solid advice if you're so telling me you're going to go there today or tomorrow. Yeah. Thanks. Song for the ladies, Rick. I'll leave you with Lamb Chop. A lot of people aren't a fan of Lamb Chop for some reason. They don't like the way he sings, but this is a beautiful song. That's the reason. Up with people. See ya. Bye. Bye.